All right, it is 4.30, so we're going to get started. So it's just the three of us. So to tell you what, what, what questions do you have? And then we can, I'll dig into what I have on my computer. Um, this is Jenny. I, um, I'm always curious about IntelliCare. I uh, have avoided it like the plague in EagleSoft. I kind of burst myself in all areas of EagleSoft, but it's just one area that it just seemed like it was going to be a daunting task to start to use and uh, utilize. So I'd just like to see um, maybe from start to finish a, a setup of an IntelliCare announce or a prompt. Okay. Becky, can you, are you able to talk or I don't know if yours is muted or if you have your computer open or. I, I think I can now. Oh, can you hear okay. me? Yep. Yep. Now I can. Yep. Did you have anything specific okay. that you were looking for? Uh, honestly, our office isn't using them at all. I mean, here and there. Okay. And I think we need to utilize them. So I was just going to see how it does. Okay. So let me just show you guys, like, the, the most basic two are the Bitewing and the FMX uh, IntelliCares. Now, it won't matter if you have digital x-ray or if what system you use, if you use the system inside EagleSoft, um, because they're going to be based on the service codes. So um, mine are already set up, but I'm going to set up a, I'm going to set up one from scratch just so you can see. And there's my like do for bite wings, but I'll, I'll set up a brand new one so you guys can see. I'm recording this, so you know you, you don't have to take notes. I'm going to put it right up after we get done. So uh, You'll, I'll, and then you can slow it down and replay it if you want. So I always say do for bite wings, whatever. Um, and if I could spell, I'd be really dangerous. So do for bite wings. And then what I use is, I, typically you could use the imaging if you had digital that was connected through EagleSoft through advanced imaging and you were using templates. The reason I don't use that is sometimes in the clinical area, they'll take a four bite wing mount and they'll put four PAs in there. And then it'll look like the patient just had bite wings, but they just did it for convenience sake. So I typically don't do that. What I typically do is use the service codes. And then I'll say, do for bite wings based on services that are completed and add my FMX, all right, because if they have an FMX, it's just a bite wings. I put my two bite wings and I put my four bite wings. Now, if you guys also typically do seven vertical bite wings, obviously you wanna add that too. The other code I use is, uh, you've, you've seen me post on there that I do um, a admin code for when I get an FMX from another office. So I actually have a, another code so if I get an FMX from another office and it was, say, three months ago, then we don't want to take bite wings. So I add that code, too. Now I say that we take, we're, you know, we check for bite wings because we don't take bite wings every year, but we check for bite wings every 12 months and a day. And I want to start being warned immediately when the patients do. All right, so you always want to change that to zero. And... Maybe you don't take bite wings on kids under, say, five. I mean, I don't know, but whatever you want. So you can change that date range, that age range to whatever you want. I never check these boxes over here. If you check these boxes over here, you're going to get a secondary pop-up that happens above and beyond that normal patient alert pop-up. So it's really, really, really annoying. So don't use those. And then what I do is I browse for an icon. And you're going to see I've got hundreds of icons in my database. Uh, anytime I've ever worked with an office, and you're talking, I've been in 5,000 practices. So anytime somebody says, I need an icon for X, I've got to come up with it. So I go down to, uh, we did bite wings. I do the green tooth. That's built, you already have that one. That's built into EagleSoft. So I get a green tooth when I know the patient is due for bite wings. And I want that on my schedule. So this is on the appointment. And I want it also in that virtual clinical screen. So those are the two check checkboxes you use down there. All right, and okay. And now it's gonna be in your list. All right, I'm gonna take that one out just cause I already have it in. 
at any time you can delete these, put them back in, change, change the way they're set. You know, th there's nothing that's going to stop you from being able to use it. So that's my bite wings. I'll show you how the pan is set up. Same idea. But, and I set this and I, you know, I asked my doctors, what is your clinical, um, where you want to start checking to see that a patient has an FMX or pan on file. You could do these separately if you want to do a, a Panorex and an FMX, but I do it the same. Um, so this is my do for FMX or pan. Use the same kinds of codes, my, you know, my imported codes. Um, I actually need to add my imported Panorex code on there. I forgot that I just redid this database. All right. And if a patient hasn't had an FMX or PAN in three years and a day, it shows up. Doesn't mean I need to take one, just means that I want to check and see what the status is. And I do this for people 18 and over, and I use a red tooth. Again, I just browsed, and I know off the top of my head that there's actually an icon called red tooth. So that's the one I always use for my FMX. And then those icons are going to show on my schedule right there. So now those my... icons will not show up if they are not due. Exactly. You're going to see it on mine. Everybody has it on mine because everybody is due in my system, except for that person. He must add an FMX or, you know, he's under 18. That's probably why. Okay. Yep. So they'll automatically show if the patient has not been charged out for any of those procedure codes that you saw on those lists. Great. All right. And that's it. That one is so easy to do and so simplistic. And it will, I mean, if you think about the fact that most hygienists have to review charts on a regular basis to see who's due, this is great because it just automatically shows. Now, it also doesn't mean that the person needs them, but at least you can tell that they haven't had them in X period of time. So that's the most simplistic, but the easiest one to, to get done. Let me go to another one here. Go back to my IntelliCares. And the ones that you see, and I haven't done them all because I just started playing with this, but the ones that you see with the asterisks next to them, they're actually custom. So I'll show you what this is, but you're not going to be able to do them. But this is a whole lot of coding that goes in the back end of EagleSoft that says that if they have the insurance company MetLife, then I get a MetLife symbol. And, but this takes a lot of coding and it's specific to each office because everybody's MetLife or everybody's Delta or whatever is a different number. So not, not everybody can do this. So it takes some, you know, it really takes somebody uh, who's a, like a certified Patterson trainer who can come in and actually do these, uh, do a report, then create a, a query and then put it in. So it's not something that everybody can do, but you could have, if there was one that was very you know important to you, like if you said, um, there's one plan that we need to know if they have it, then we could put it in for you and get it, get it to work. Um, this is also a good one. If you're, if you're updating medical histories for whatever reason, this is one that you could do, you know, the next time you go back in the office and I'll start from, well, you can see it. So it's missing medical history. And I use this under the documentation tab. And I said, if a patient is missing the patient medical history, all right, every 24 months and a day, then I get an icon. Now I should have this checked off so I could see it on the schedule. But in this example that I have, I just have it set up so it shows in the clinical screen. But you could have either or or both. It's up to you. And that way, when patients are showing up, you know that it's time to take the, the, um, the, the medical history. So that's an easy one to set up. You're just going to use the documentation tab and then connect it to the medical history. There's another way you can set it up with using the smart doc. If you're scan, if you're um, putting the medical history in the smart doc, you can find your medical history um, category or document group and connect it there too. So it's up to you. How, it depends on where you keep it. I just have my setup to go against the medical history, create it, and update it. So if you're doing the medical histories in EagleSoft, then this is probably the easier way to go. But if you're you know saving them, if you have a some other paper format and you're scanning into SmartDoc, then you want to go by the SmartDoc acquired. But that's an easy one. Let me see if there's another. 
Now, some of these other ones, um, this is an easy one too. No insurance on file. You can do this other than the ones that you saw that are specific insurance companies. This is an easy one. I'll start it from scratch so you can see how to do that. So if you wanted to show all of your cash patients, I don't know, like in my practice, we verified coverage almost every time the patients came in. So this was an easy way to go through the schedule and I can quickly go down and see, did, did anybody on here? Okay, see that little symbol right there? It's an I with a line through it. I automatically know that person has no insurance on file. So there's no, I don't have to do verification on all those people. Okay. And the way that I set that up is, whatever, whatever we wanna call it. And then I'm gonna go against patient information. And I'm gonna say anybody who doesn't have an employer in EagleSoft is somebody who has no insurance because that's how we connect insurance. So no insurance on file, go to employer. You don't have to worry about this center section because it's gonna have nothing to do with balances or anything like that and just pick an icon. And in EagleSoft, there's already, if you go down to letter, you could say letter C, For your cash patient, I mean, you know, whatever you think is appropriate. So anybody who has no employer will have a C on their schedule and on the clinical screen. That's a really easy one. And now you've got it. It's a lot easier than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, see, a lot of it is the, if this, then that. But the, the, the bigger issue is sometimes you'll try to do these things and you'll get a lot of false positives or false negatives because, let me go to March 6th. Um, uh, yeah, because the same patients with the blue icon also have the Cs. Uh, uh, what will happen is if you, if you, you know, if you don't get all of the codes correctly or something like that, then you'll, you'll wind up with people who have, you know, it says they're due for bite wings, but they really had them. And it could be they weren't charged out or even on like if, imagine if you had an employee who was scheduled and you didn't charge that person out every time they, you know, they had treatment done, then of course they're going to have that icon show up because they've never been charged for it. So, mm. you know, sometimes you get some false positives. Let me see what else we have in here. So those are like the quickest, easiest ones. This overdue for recall. I use this for patients who haven't had a recall visit in eight months or more. So we think about the scenario where patients are in the, the doctor's chair and they've had a lot of re reconstructive work and they, they keep missing their recalls because they're going through reconstructive stuff. So I say if somebody hasn't had a recall in eight months, and a day, give me a toothbrush that shows up on the schedule or in the clinical screen. So imagine the doctor's working on a patient and they see this icon down there, then they know that person is way overdue for recall. But if you set it for less than eight months, it, you're gonna get a bunch of false positives because maybe somebody couldn't come in and because they only come in on a Thursday and you didn't have any Thursdays available. Now they're seven months out. Well, but they're really on schedule. So I always set a little higher, like at eight months out but that's another easier one you can do. Just overdue for recall. If they haven't had their checkup visits, you know, I do Profi, Profi and Perio Maintenance, then give me a toothbrush. And there's lots, that, that icon I think is already in the database. If you, if you start doing one of these and you realize you need an icon, let me know, because I've got a million of them. You can make them yourselves, they're really easy, but just let me know, I, I'm, I have a million of them. And this I've is one of- I've several icons um, uh, myself to, to alert me to different, um, like the Medicaid plans here in Indiana. Oh, perfect. Like and, you know, uh, HS and different things like that. So those are really nice and easy to yeah. really make. Yeah. Now, the Say Happy Birthday is one that comes out of the box with, with Eaglesoft. So if you just write Say Happy Birthday and click on Patient Birthday, I always say if their birthday is within two calendar weeks of, the, of today, then give me balloons on the schedule. Now remember, their birthday could have been a, a week and a half ago, but at least, you know, it's come almost like saying Happy New Year. I mean, if you get into February, you're still saying Happy New Year, that's kind of silly. But, you know, within two weeks of Happy New Year is okay. So that's the same way I do it. And I put those again on the schedule and on the clinical screen. So I'm glad you said that about the uh, medical 
alerts. So there are actually two types of alerts that you also can tie to these things. And that's the patient alerts. And I only put in this uh, patient alert field those things that aren't going to be on the medical history form. Like I've got high blood pressure, but I really don't use that. But like impaired hearing, impaired vision, um, no epi. Um, I actually have a practice that has... Uh, support like um, support dogs that walk around the office so i actually had to create this icon to let them know if the dogs were allowed in the operatory or not wow <laughs> yeah so i mean it, there's just like <laughs> unlimited amount of stuff you can do cpap users uh, i did for an office that does a lot of sleep studies so it, you know there's there's unlimited amounts of things that you could do for this but so your your non medical related, all right. And I I always love this one. If you have an office that you know there's only one operatory where you have handicap access, or if they have to come in a back door or something like that, this is a great icon to, to put into your system to let you know. So that was one, and then the second is the medical alerts that are attached to the medical history form. So all of the medical history alerts that are already in your system or, you know, that are on the, on the form, you can tie these to icons. And I have those show up in the clinical screen, but not on the schedule. Now, you know, somebody was asking me about like HIV positive. I wouldn't put that on the schedule. It's not really, it's not that important. Uh, you know, there should be standard precautions, so it doesn't matter if they have it or not. But yeah, I do want to let my back office know that they do. So you can go through here and edit these things and put any icon you want, and that way you get lungs that show up if they're they have emphysema. And those icons, instead of showing up on the schedule, let me put a patient in the chair, show up right there. So there's my epi-sensitivity, there's my hearing problem, there's my bite wings and my FMX. This is tied to the memo in the patient, um, edit patient screen. This is a really hard one to put in, but I, I have it. There's my blue shield, there's my pre-medicate, there's my doctor preference, there's a toothbrush, and there's overdue for their med hist. And the beauty of these is that as soon as you do the bite wings, they go away.